Hello everyone, welcome once again to Scorpion Cigar Reviews. Today I will be reviewing the Perdomo 20th Anniversary. This is a Maduro. Now they call this a Churchill size cigar. It's 7 by 56. Now it's a little big for a Churchill. Typically Churchills are under 50 ring gauge. Uh, I would call this myself more of a, a Toro Extra or uh, I don't know, double Corona or something, but 7 by 56 and they're calling it a Church Hill. But hey, that's fine, no problem there. Uh, this is a uh, gently box pressed cigar. This was gifted to me by uh, my good buddy uh, Victor Esposito. Sent this in for review. Thank you very much, my friend. Um, right off the bat, I noticed that there is a little bit of damage on the wrapper leaf right here where the wrapper and the there's a vein there and it seems to be pulling away from the the leaf seems to be pulling away from the vein so i'm gonna have to take a lot of caution with this right in here i didn't notice this earlier i would have put a little little glue on it but hopefully we'll burn through it just fine without any issues uh this is a if i haven't mentioned this is a nicaraguan puro Today, I will be using my Zycar guillotine cutter. Mm. Boy, I do that. Mm. Lots of leather. I haven't even cut it yet, just when I'm able to get through it, lots of leather. Let's see here. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of leather on the, on the foot. A little bit of spice in there, a little cedar spice. The wrapper, I'm not getting a whole lot, but let's go ahead and cut this bad boy up. All right. Yep, leather. Some cedar spice. Maybe some other kitchen spices, some pepper, maybe a little paprika in there, maybe. Possibly some paprika. Real subtle. Using my Zycar double flame torch lighter. I've had this sitting in my humidor for I think it's I think it's been about two weeks now. Something like that. No, I take that back. I think it's been three. All right. Get that initial blast of pepper on the retro hail and put on the rear of the palate. It's a good pepper blast. Sometimes you get that pepper blast just you say, whoa, that's just too much. But this was uh, kind of pleasant. Maybe a little bit of nuttiness in there too, like um, maybe some Cajun nuts. It's not just pepper like black pepper, there seems to be like a Cajun spice to it. Like I said, like those uh, Cajun nut mix, something like that, hot and spicy. Oh yeah, good kick of pepper there. Nice blast. All right, I'll continue on. I'll come back somewhere in the first third, seeing a bit.
be pairing tonight's cigar with Booker's Bourbon. This is a uh, very high strength alcohol at 64.45% alcohol by volume, 128.9 proof. Cut this with a good amount of water. Um, I've, I've had this for a while, but I, I haven't had a whole lot out of it, being that it's, um, to me, it's kind of a, a specialty bourbon for me. Um, on the higher price end for me. Certainly it's not up there in the price range of Pappy Van Winkle or anything like that, but at, uh, it was like 60 or $65 if I remember right for this bottle. That's, for me, I'd rather spend that money on cigars. There's lots of good bourbon out there that's 20 30 $40. Just like a lot of good cigars for 6 7 $8. You don't have to spend $15, $20, $30 to get a good cigar. Anyway, as I said, I've added a good dose of water to this. Get that nice corn sweetness on the tongue. A little bit of citrus. A bit of a spice note in there. Definitely has that typical bourbon-esque quality to it influence of the oak barrels, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of oak, a little bit of overripe fruit, banana particularly, overripe banana, not in a bad way, sometimes overripe bananas can be sickening sweet, that's not the case. Very good. Hopefully this will pair really nicely with the Perdomo 20th Anniversary Maduro. We'll see. See you in a bit. Here we are, just about 20 minutes in. A couple things. You can see it's burning really uneven. Ash is starting to go crooked. It's probably going to be light and flaky. You have to tap it off very soon. And that spot where the wrapper was starting to come undone a little bit, where it was pulling away from the vein. It's just blowing all apart, you can see here. It's gonna be a big problem, I think, but we'll see what happens. Now, with that, it's one of the reasons why it's probably best, you know, it's a personal preference, but honestly, it's probably best, when possible, leave the band on. A couple things, one, when you remove the band, you risk damaging the cigar. You don't wanna damage it way up here, because If you damage it up here, you gotta smoke through all this the whole time you're plagued with uh, an issue, draw issues, burn issues, you know, whatever, um, because you've got a tear or something way up here. Whereas if you've got a small hole or a tear closer towards the foot, you can quickly burn through. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and the other issue is, you know, when, when you remove the band, sometimes you have trouble with the wrapper coming undone. Um, and it gives you something to hold on to without risk of your touch damaging the wrapper. Hopefully this won't become any more of a problem than it already is. We'll just have to see what happens. It seems to be burning just fine as far as getting smoke through it and it's not, it doesn't seem to be trying to go out or anything like that, but it's definitely burning uneven, big time. It's just, it's getting worse and worse. I'm definitely gonna have to touch this up. Try to tap it off, but because it's burning so unevenly, it doesn't really wanna tap off properly. I'll go ahead and touch it up. Too many touch-ups. This is a little trouble with lighter here. Thought I refilled it, but
definitely a good cigar. There's um, a little bit of nuttiness, a little bit of creaminess. The smoke is kind of slick in the mouth, but the rear of the palate's a little bit dry. I can hear it kind of crackling, almost like it's over dried or something. And that would explain why the wrapper leaf is self-destructing. Uh, could be this wasn't properly stored or shipped or processed. Could have been anything. You know, these things when they, they travel from factory to uh, to the retailer and then to the consumer, um, they go through a lot of harsh conditions, especially from all the way from Nicaragua till it hits, whether it's uh, you know when you're when you're big big retailers like Scars International or JRs or something like that, or even at your local boutique B and M or something like that, they can sit in container ships, basically baking in an oven as they as they come across. Um, and they can do a lot of damage to cigars, so proper humidification from the very beginning is, is paramount to a good product in the consumer's hand. Um, things happen out at sea, ships get delayed, get delayed in port, um, get delayed in customs, all kinds of things. So they could sit there and, and just dry out and all kinds of, all kinds of things can happen. So, you know, you can't necessarily point the finger at the manufacturer directly or a specific roller or or an inspector that inspected the leaves to make sure everything was good to go things happen in shipping so it is what it is maybe a very subtle subtle coffee note in there that slightly bitterness to a coffee um, not bitter in a bad way, and it's, it's very subtle. I've had cigars where the coffee was strong enough that it actually made the smoke, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> made the smoke quite bitter. <clears throat> but anyway, it's not the case with this, there's really nothing bitter or off-putting in that way. <clears throat> I know I'm going to take a little break here. I'll come back after I find out what's going on here. <clears throat> I'll see you in a bit. Here we are about 45 minutes in, into the second third. Doesn't look like the self-destructing wrapper is progressing any further. However, I'm still plagued with burn issues. I've had to touch it up a couple times burning all uneven and wonky, the ash is loose and choppy and flaky and just kind of annoying, I guess. Hopefully I can burn through this shortly. Um, this unraveling and all this just, it's, it's annoying. But, the scar seems to be well balanced. up <clears throat> a little bit of earthiness I will be deducting points for the burn issues and the wrapper unraveling um, as long as it doesn't get any worse than it has probably probably deduct one full point in my final adjustments Medium body and strength. It's pairing very nicely with the Booker's bourbon. Something else there. 
the bourbon is helping to bring out some other flavor characteristics, but I'm not not sure what they are yet. There's they're not necessarily bound. They're just maybe haven't come into their own yet. I'll continue smoking this and uh, I'll come back somewhere in the final third and I'll see if I can decipher uh, these different flavors that are coming through. See you in a bit. I've been asked by a few people about, I guess to sum it up about cigar manufacturing, they ask, well, how many cigar manufacturers are there? You can't think of it that way. You have many different blends within a cigar uh, company. You have, take for example, this Perdomo. You have 10th anniversary, 20th anniversary, um, the uh, Noir, uh, there's a whole line within the Perdomo. Uh, and then you have a lot 23, all kinds of things. And then you have little side companies for many cigar manufacturers that they'll do these little spin-offs and they'll call it some other name but it's owned by that manufacturer. Then you have all these groups, whether it's Perdomo or um, an Alvo or a Tatuaje, uh, a Dura State, all these different manufacturers, they're all part of a bigger company. Um, Altadis, for example, and then you have uh, an even broader range, which is the growers. There, are, I could be wrong on this, but I think there are typically three major growers that supply the tobacco to the all the different factories who are owned by different companies. And, and each factory makes cigars for different brands, different companies. And one factory may make the blend from one cigar company along with five, six, seven, or eight other cigar companies, and another factory may make another blend from that same company and six, seven, or eight other companies. Some of them overlap, some of them don't. And growers supply to various factories. So if you were to break a cigar down to it's very basic roots. It comes up to the growers. So you can have a cigar that's a blend of three or four different tobaccos between the wrapper, the binder, the filler, uh, maybe multiple fillers, and they source their leaves from several different um, sources, but they get those leaves from the growers. So to break it down to its most common denominator would be the grower. Um, there are fewer growers than there are blends, obviously, and everything in between. So, yeah, um, if you were to ask, that's not really the, the proper question because there's so many different ways to look at it. But that's just something to think about. Hope that answers your question. Back to the cigar review. Let's see about removing this label. See what happens here. Make sure we're not going to totally fall apart because the damaged wrapper leaf is all the way up to the label. Okay, came off nicely. Doesn't appear to have any further damage, so maybe we'll be okay from here on out. hour and 15 minutes in. Still quite a lot of cigar left, probably. Probably four inches of cigar there. 
So I'm still in the second third. So I'm not going to really do much as far as uh, updating any of the uh, flavor profile because it really hasn't been a whole lot of changes since the last segment. Other than it seems I finally burned through the uh, portion of the wrapper leaf that was kind of shredding itself. Ash has been uh, loose and flaky all the way. Uneven burn. Had to touch it up several times. But maybe we'll be good from here on out. So I'm going to continue smoking this and uh, we'll see what happens. I'll be back in a little bit. Here I am about an hour and 55 minutes in. I still have darn near three inches of cigar here. Probably inch and a half, two inches worth of smokable cigar. The after I remove the the band, the wrapper leaf seemed to be okay, but I've noticed in the last ten or fifteen minutes that the leaf is starting to unravel yet again. Right here. I need to see that. Not a whole lot of light here, but it's it's unraveling again. So this uh, wrapper leaf is been plagued with uh, all sorts of issues. Um, kind of disappointing uh, in that regard. Um, I, I had hoped that once I had smoked through where the wrapper was tearing and unraveling and just, just blowing all apart, I, I, I had hoped that it was going to be okay beyond that, but it's not. It's uh, still coming apart, but and the the ash tends to, to flower and just just real loose and choppy and uh, I, I don't know if it's necessarily a construction issue directly or if it's more of um, storage and handling from time of manufacture until I've smoked it now don't know there's so many things that happen between then and now that can affect the overall health, if you will, of uh, of the cigar. However, that being said, um, I'm pleased with the flavor profile. Uh, I've picked up um, some mild pepper. The pepper note, kind of spicy pepper, has been the mainstay throughout the smoking of the cigar at this point. Um, been some occasional hints of some leather, some grains, a little bit of uh, cereal type grains, a little bit of earth, a um, little bit of meatiness, a little bit of nuttiness. So there's been uh, quite a few changes, um, kind of a wide profile. Um, it started to open up late in the second third to where I was able to decipher some of these flavors a little bit better. So um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty pretty broad range of the uh, flavor profile, which I like. I like when there's a lot of different things going on, especially if I can decipher them, pick each one out, and say, yeah, I'm tasting this, I'm tasting that, I've got this, I've got that. Um, I like that. What I don't like the burn issues. I'm starting to have trouble where the smoke is becoming very thin, it keeps trying to go out. I have had to touch it up numerous times. I tell you, at nine dollars, it's really good value. It's it's got some really good flavors, um, and I've been smoking this for oh gosh, an uh, hour and forty-five minutes or something. At the, I'm sorry, let's see, it was fifteen, ten, fifteen. Yeah, an uh, hour and forty-five minutes at this point. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a good value. Hour and 45 minutes, and I've still got some cigar left. I've probably got 15, 20 minutes worth of smoking left, so this is easily going to be a two hour cigar for $9. Uh, you really can't go wrong there unless you just don't like the cigar. Um, but I do like this. Um, is it necessarily um, one of my favorites? No, but I definitely like this. And yeah, I would, I would look for this cigar and I would buy it again um, and hope to find that uh, future um, samplings of this cigar wouldn't have the burn issues and the unraveling of the wrapper and that type of thing. 
don't know. Um, so one of the things that if you're willing to give it another shot, which I am, um, then by all means do. And I'll continue on. I'm going to have to relight this. It's trying to go out on me. I'll come back in the nub and see if there's anything else that's going on with the flavor profile or, or anything like that and uh, give you my final thoughts from there. I'll see you in a bit. Here we are, two hours in, uh, approaching the nub. It's been a well-balanced cigar. Real happy with it. Really hasn't been any major changes in the nub. Still picking up a real subtle coffee note um, and that kind of peppery, spicy character still there, real subtle. Um, yeah, just really no changes in the nub. Um, some of the flavors that were there before have kind of diminished. Um, some of them have come back for a short while and then gone away again. But uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll go ahead and end this review here saying that the Perdomo 20th Anniversary Churchill 7x56, 56? 56? Yeah, 7x56 um, Maduro. It's been uh, a real pleasing cigar, really, for $9 and smoked it for two hours. Um, although it was plagued with burn issues, um, had to touch it up many times. Um, the wrapper uh, came unraveled um, almost instantly, and it was plagued with, with that throughout the cigar. Um, who would I recommend this to? Uh, really just about anybody a, a novice could appreciate that is not overpowering in any aspect. It's not super peppery. It's not real spicy. Um, the flavors are um, dominant enough that you can pick them out. Uh, yet nothing is overbearing. Nothing is like really in your face up front. You know, nothing that's too overbearing. Uh, a novice uh, wouldn't be... Uh, maybe scared away by something that they would fear that they wouldn't be able to recognize uh, the flavors. At the same time, an experienced cigar smoker uh, can appreciate the, the subtle changes, the uh, wide flavor profile. Um, yeah, real good cigar. I think just about anybody that's uh, uh, into smoking cigars could, could appreciate this. So, uh, yeah, I'll end this review here. I'd like to give a little shout-out to uh, my friend Victor Esposito. Thank you very much for sending this to me for review. i also like to give a shout-out to my friends in Finland. Uh, my buddy Don tells me that uh, Risa Ranta is going to experience his first freeze tonight, although it's, uh, it's early morning for him now. So, yeah, he's had his first freeze tonight at Risa Ranta. Uh, hope all my friends in Finland are... Uh, well prepared for the uh, long winter ahead and uh, hope to see some reviews from you guys and I hope you enjoy my reviews. Thank you for watching Scorpion Cigar Reviews. Catch you next time. And what of the Booker's Bourbon? Did it pair well with the Perdomo 20th Anniversary? Yes it did. Very good pairing. They complemented each other nicely. The bourbon helped to bring out some of the flavors of the cigar. Um, real nice pairing. I'm real happy with, with uh, my, my choice for this uh, evening's uh, pairing of uh, this libation and this cigar. Very good. I've scored this cigar uh, 92 points with two deduction points. Uh, based on the um, burn issues where I've had to touch it up multiple times and the uh, wrapper unraveling. So I've uh, removed, uh, I've deducted two points, giving it a total of 92 points. Great cigar. Um, there you have it.